Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, we have been, and it's been a while, maybe a couple of weeks, but we started talking about living supernatural life naturally. And tonight I want to continue this lesson, and I just want to put another spin to what we've been talking about in light of what we've been talking about. And I've got literally high expectations tonight of God to do some awesome things on the inside of you. And you ought to have a great expectation. You purpose in your heart tonight that you will not leave here the way you came. You've got a purpose in your heart that what you hear will be a part of your life forever. And you will walk out what you are hearing in your life forever. No matter what the situation looks like, no matter what the enemy is throwing at me, no matter what hindrances or distractions may come my way, I have a purpose in my heart that I'm going to not just be a hearer of the word, but I'm going to be a doer of the word also. Anybody agree with me? Glory to God. And so you have got to get a hold of what I'm about to say to you tonight. And I don't necessarily believe that it's something new that I have not spoken to you before, but faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God, and for some of you, yeah, I heard it before, but I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't quite getting it, but the light bulb's coming on tonight. Amen. Glory to God. I'm going to get it tonight. Amen. And I'm going to walk it out tonight. Now, I'm telling you, I preached this message Sunday in our D.C. church. And after, ever, after having heard the word, there was a young lady in the service that was deaf, that ears were open. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory, are you hearing me? Praise you, Jesus. Glory. And so I want to get your expectations up. There was another young lady in a wheelchair that was paralyzed in the wheelchair. And after hearing the word of God, she had no movement in her legs, couldn't move them. She moved both her legs. Are you hearing me? Glory to God. She had devices in her wheelchair that would cause her to sit up and that would hold her in that seat. And after hearing the word, she said, let those things go and sat up. Are you hearing me? Glory to God. Somebody said, I have a purpose in my heart tonight that my life will never be the same again. I will hear this word. I will do this word, and I will see the manifestation of every promise that is written in the word of God for my life, in my life, now. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. You have to have purpose. Make up in your mind. You're not going to leave this place the same. We were talking about this area of supernatural, living supernaturally, naturally. Is this, this is the will and the plan of God for you and I as believers that we will live this supernatural life that God has for us naturally. It is the trick of the enemy that will keep us focused on this natural low life of ours living our lives based on the flesh and not who we are. And we've done enough teaching. I don't mean that say enough, but we've done a lot of teaching on who we are spiritually, that we are spiritual beings, have a soul, and live in a body. Then the enemy will take, keep your focus on this natural world, things that are happening naturally and things that are going on naturally so that we cannot see what God has already done for you in the realm of the supernatural. I hear what I just said. You can't see by looking at the natural, the things that God has already done in the spirit. Because we're allowing the natural to determine what God has and will do. God's already done it. That's a revelation right there. 
I said, God's already done it. Tell your neighbor, say, God has done everything he'll ever do for you. He's already done it. But how, what we're doing, we're focusing on the natural, looking at things naturally, trying to wait for something manifest naturally before we determine whether we got what God already did before. But if I look at it in the realm of the spirit, I'm already walking in my healing. I'm already walking in my deliverance. I've already got everything that God said belonged to me. It doesn't matter what it looks like. I've already got what God says belongs to me. It's already mine. He's already done it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Somebody said he's already done it. Now, listen, the things that God has, has shown us in the word of God, I told you before, they're not just cute little stories where we can see, oh, how God manifested in so many people's lives supernaturally, and we wonder, oh, I wish that was me, or, or look at the book of Acts, look at all the miracles and things that take place, and, and then we'd say, oh, one day God's going to do that again, and we're, in, we're coming to a place where God's going to manifest again. God's already, he's already done everything he'll ever do for you. He's already manifested. Glory to God. If you were in the realm of the spirit, and we talked about seeing. If you can see it, it's already done. Are you hearing me? Jesus died to purchase it for you. Did he not die? Did God raise him from the dead? Somebody said it's already done. He's not going to die again for you to give you what belongs to you. He's already done it. Hallelujah. And so when you look at the supernatural manifestations of things that took place in the word of God, it's something that God wants you to experience. He wants you to live a supernatural life naturally. He wants the things that you read about and dream about and, and see in the word of God to happen for your life. He wants you to manifest heaven on earth. That is the will of God. He asked you to pray that. In Matthew 6, 10, he says, pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's so powerful. On earth, whatever's going on in heaven, God wants it to happen on earth in your life. And he's given you and I, obviously, keys to the kingdom. Matthew 16 said he gave you the keys to cause those things to manifest. And he's giving you the keys. What is it, where do the keys come from? It comes through revelation. God revealing to you the things that he's already done. And we're going to reveal some things tonight. Hallelujah. Some things that God has already done. First of all, look with me to Psalms 33. Rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous, for praise is calmly to the upright. Glory to God. Praise is common for you and I. Not whining, not crying, and not depression. Praise is calmly to the upright. Praise the Lord with harp and sing unto him with psaltery and an instrument of ten strings. Sing unto him a new song. Play skillfully with a loud noise. For the word of the Lord is right, and all his works are done in truth. For the word of the Lord is right. Say his word is right. And everything else is wrong. You know how people are saying something and you don't agree with it? He said, no, that's wrong. Or somebody does something that, that was just so out of character, you know that's wrong. You know you shouldn't have did that. was just so wrong. Because everything else is wrong, but the word of the Lord is right. That sickness and disease, that's so wrong. That lack is so wrong. That you going through is so wrong. Your toe-up marriage is so wrong. But the word of the Lord is right. Hallelujah. <laughs> and all his works are done in truth. All his works are true. All his works, done is in italicized, but it's so key 
till you have an understanding. That's why it's there in italicized to put more emphasis on what is being said. All his works, first of all, let's stop right there. All his works are done. Amen. Tell your neighbor, say, all his works are done. And then it says, all his works are in truth. Everything, the word of the Lord is right. All his words, a words is right, and all his works are in truth. Everything else that may be happening may be factual in this natural, but his works are true. What he did is true. Oh, glory to God. What's happening to you and the things that are coming against you those may be things that you may sing in the natural, but the works of God are in truth. Glory to God. That's why he says, why you look, look not at the things that are seen, for the things you can see are temporal. But look at the things you cannot see. Those are true things. Glory. There's something more real than what you can see that's real. If that's the such, more real. Hallelujah. His world and the spiritual world is more real than the world you live in. Just like God says in John 17, you are in this world, but you're not of this world. Why? I come from above. And so the thing where I come from and of above is more real and true than what's happening in this world. In this world, I may not see the manifestation, but in this world that I live in, where I come from, it's finished. It's done. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on, bring your faith back. Bring your faith back. Hallelujah. You get, we can get so caught up in looking at things from a natural standpoint Waiting for something to happen when God's already done it. The reason why we're not seeing manifestations on a regular basis, day-to-day -day basis, is because we're putting our faith to something futuristic to happen in our lives when God's already done it. One day I'm going to have this. One day I'm going to move this way. One day this is going to happen. My healing's coming. Jesus, you, all these things, we're putting it to the future. When God said it's already in the past, it's done. Stop looking at the natural. Somebody said it's done. He said, listen. He loveth righteousness and judgment. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Somebody said the earth, the earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Then why are we focusing all the bad? It's full of goodness. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I said, Lord, manifest your goodness today. <laughs> Hallelujah. I receive the goodness of the Lord. Hallelujah. It says, by the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. He gathered the waters of the seas together as in heap. He layeth up the depths in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spake... And it was what? He spake and it was. Done again is in italicized, but giving emphasis to the words that, that was spoken so you know what was taking place. He spake and it was. Hallelujah. For he spake and it was. He commanded and it stood fast. Oh God. Somebody said he spake. And it, was. and it was. He commanded, he commanded. and it stood fast. It stood fast. Now, sometimes you got to just kind of like piece it all together because he's like, oh, my God, God said it, and it was. He commanded, and it stood fast. Oh, let's see. Wait, 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 wait. I'm made in the image and the likeness of God. He made me just like himself. I'm another speaking spirit. That means if I speak, it was. If I command it, 
it shall stand fast. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Woo, glory. Somebody said, it's done. It's done. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at Psalm 52. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. We're going to do some of this tonight. But you're going to go home and do this. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Jesus. Psalm 52, are you there? Yes. Look at verse 9. Read it out loud with me. I will praise thee forever because thou hast done it. He said, I will praise you forever because thou hast done it. Now, there's no italicized there except for it, and you put what it is. <laughs> I will praise you, Lord, forever because thou hast done it. Now, you know, we say, you know, let's praise God like you got something. Let's praise God like you know he's going to do something for you. No, I praise him because he's done it. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. I don't have to wait to see it. I know I can praise him because he has done it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And then he says, and I will wait on thy name, for it is good before thy saints. Now, he's not saying wait as if to wait on some, for God to do something. The word wait there also means to praise. It means to wait on God or to serve God. God, I will serve you. I will praise you, God. He, he said, I will praise your name, God, because, because or for it is good before all the saints. And so I can praise God because he has done it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You know how we get excited after God if we see the manifestation of something. But when you see it, glory to God. The moment I speak it out of my mouth, I can praise him because he's done it. Hallelujah. I know he's already done it. These things have to become revelation to you so that you can see the manifestation of what God has already done in your life. He's, ever go he's already done everything he's ever going to do for you. He's already, listen to me, he's already made a deposit within your spirit everything you need to be successful in life. Everything you need to get ahead in life, God's already made the deposit on the inside of you. You have everything in your spirit for you to be successful. He's already done it. Glory to God. Listen, First Corinthians, let's, let's look at that again. I have to show you this again. First Corinthians chapter 2, you're, you're familiar with this. Tell your neighbor, say, God has done everything for you he's ever going to do. The deposit has been made in your spirit. Somebody say, victory's on the inside of me. Somebody say, healing's on the inside of me. Say, prosperity is on the inside of me. Say, a good marriage is in me. I was born to be successful. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Everything that God has for you is on the inside of you. Now, we have to draw out of the wells of our salvation. Everything that God has put on the inside of you. And prayerfully tonight, I'll get to show you how to draw out. Hallelujah. What God has placed on the inside of you so that you can see the manifestation of what God has declared. Let's look at this again. It says, but listen, verse 9. 
But as it is written, eyes have not seen or ear have heard, neither has entered the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit search all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man know the things of a man, save the spirit of a man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. God has made a deposit of things that your natural eyes have not seen, your natural ears have not heard. It is not even entered in your own natural understanding the things that God has prepared for you. But God has revealed those things to your spiritual eyes. He has revealed those things to your spiritual ears. He's put it inside of your heart the things that God has prepared for you because the Spirit of God Search all things, yea, the deep things of God, because nobody knows you better than God. God knows what he put on the inside of you, and nobody knows you better than the Spirit of God that's inside of you that is revealing to your spirit the things that God has for you. God's put some stuff on the inside of you, and your spirit will draw out what God placed on the inside of you. He says, now, listen, listen, now. We have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we may know the things that have been freely given unto us. Yeah. Now, God wants you to know the things he freely gave. Somebody say freely. freely. This is so key in your understanding tonight. Somebody say everything, everything. that God has given me, God has he's given it to me free. Oh, I got to say that. I got to say it again. Everything, Everything that, God that God has deposited, has deposited in, my spirit, in my spirit for me, for me. He, gave he gave it to me free. free. Yeah. And God wants you to know the things that he has freely given unto you. And so it's the, listen, here's the trick of the enemy. You're not going to get that. Look what you did. You don't make enough money. You ain't going to get that. You got to have this. You got to do this. Your life ain't right. Look at you. You ain't no good. You got to be a certain way before you manifest the things that God has for you. Everything that God has deposited on the inside of you, he gave it to you free. This, he gave, oh my God. Not only did he gave it to you free, he gave you the tools necessary to get what he gave to you free to manifest in your life. So that there'll be nothing that can hinder you from walking in your free gift. You think about it. I'm going to jump ahead of myself just a little bit, but we'll backtrack. You think about it. When you got born again, when you got saved, your life was towed up. Some of you are drug addicts. Some of you, might, some of you are prostitutes, and, I, and you just weren't getting paid for it. But some, some, of, some of you are drug. I mean, listen. Wait a minute. Wait. I didn't mean for you to get stuck there. You understand what I'm saying. Some of your lives was just tore up in a whole lot of crazy ways. You were doing stuff that you know you ain't have no business doing. Your life was just tore up crazy. Somebody preached the gospel to you. For a split second, you thought, I got to get myself together before I can, Jesus can take my life. Then somebody came and told you, there ain't nothing you can do to get it together because what God has for you was a free gift. All you had to do was receive what God has for you. And when you do it, your faith in what Jesus did brought you salvation. Ain't nothing changed. Nothing's changed. You can't do anything to earn the free gift that God put on the inside of you. There's nothing you can do to earn your victory. He paid the price for you to have victory in every area of your life. You would never be in a position when you say, I did this so I got the victory. 
He did it, so I got the victory. Oh, glory to God. Oh, lady, yeah. So what do I have to do to receive my healing, Pastor Cynthia? Just the same way you receive your salvation. He shed his blood. I received him as Savior. I'm saved. He shed his blood. I receive him as healer. I'm healed. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. He shed his blood so I can be delivered. I receive my deliverer. I'm delivered. Glory to God. Somebody say, it's done. What's the hold up, Pastor Cynthia? Somebody said, it's your flesh. It's that living in that low nature, waiting to feel something, see something, and my own, leading to my own understanding. How God going to give me that without me doing anything? Well, what could you possibly do to win your salvation? What, what can you do? Somebody said it's done. it's done. He said that he wants to reveal to you the things that have been freely given up to us of God, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom speaks, teaches, but with the Holy Ghost teach, he compares spiritual things with spiritual. He does not compare spiritual things with natural things. That's what we do. But the Holy Ghost compares spiritual things with spiritual things. He put the spiritual things inside of your spirit. <laughs> but we want to compare spiritual things with natural things. If I do all this, then all these things are going to happen here. But he compares spiritual things. With spiritual things. But the natural man receive not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Your natural man cannot receive the things of the Spirit, because they're foolishness unto him. Why? For they, for neither can, he can't even know, your natural man can't even know them because they are spiritually seen. They're spiritually discerned or understood or be able to see. Let's keep reading. But he that is spiritual to judge all things. He that is spiritual discern all things. In other words, in judging here means to discern. He sees. He that is spiritual judge and sees all things, yet he himself is judged or discerned of no man. Oh, glory to God. The natural man, the low life, I call it. He cannot receive the things of the Spirit. Neither can he know them because they're spiritually, they're spiritually able to see only in the realm of the Spirit. You can only see them through the eyes of the Spirit. Yeah. And so here's this man, this spiritual man. He judges all things or he discerns all things. And he himself is discerned or judged of no man. You cannot tell me what God has or has not deposited on the inside of me. Here's this, the Holy Ghost inside of you is only comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. And so somebody, nobody can come and tell you or should not be able to come and tell you that Jesus don't heal. Or you're going to be healed one day. Somebody said that day has already come. Jesus. For who have known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unspiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. 
I fed you with milk and not with meat, for hereto you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are you able. For you are yet carnal, you still looking at everything naturally. For, where, for whereas there is among you envy and strife and division, are you not carnal and walk as men? Wait a minute, walk as a man, I am a man. You're not just a man. Now the translation said you walk as mere men. Meaning that there's another part of you, there's another side to you than just a mere man. You are a spiritual being. You are a supernatural being. You're not just a mere man. Glory to God. And so God doesn't want you to walk as mere men, and you walk as mere men when you live life on this carnal nature. And he says in this carnal nature, this manifestation of this carnal nature in you is that there's envy and strife and division among you. It's just the enemy trying to stop the manifestation of the deposit that God's placed on your spirit by focusing your attention on something else. And if you would really, you think about it, all these things, this envy and strife and division is coming from an area of offense. And it's trying to take your focus off the spiritual, put your eyes on just this natural low life, and when you do, that makes you carnal. But God says, you're not carnal, you're spiritual. You're supernatural. You're not just a mere man. <laughs> Glory to God. And so there are some things that God has placed on the inside of you, a deposit that God has placed in you that he wants to manifest so that you can walk out and manifest what God has placed on the inside of you. But the first revelation of you having this understanding is that it's already done. Not only is it already done, your healing, your deliverance, your salvation, just think about it. Jesus died on the cross for humanity. Now, salvation is available to everybody. The day you receive Jesus, that's the day of your manifestation. But when did Jesus die for you? Was it already done? Selah. That means think about it, ponder it. It was already done. And when I heard it, I just responded to what I heard. Somebody said it was already done. I just responded to what I heard. So here's what's happening with you. He said, I will praise you, God. Because thou has done it. My praise is response because of my faith in what God has already done. Faith is not something futuristic. Faith is not believing God's going to do something. That's unbelief, to believe God's going to do something when he's already declared, I've already done it. My faith is God's already done it, and I respond to what he's already done, and the attitude of my response is praise. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Are you hearing me? Faith is always in response to what's already been done. If you're believing God to do something, you don't believe it's done. I'm believing God for my marriage to work. I'm believing God to heal me. When did Jesus purchase your healing? I know I'm messing with some of y'all right now. No, seriously, when did he purchase your healing? The Bible says that he was wounded for your transgressions. He was bruised for your iniquities. The chastisement of my peace was upon him, and with his stripes... I am healed. Isaiah prophesied. What happened with Jesus on the cross? Matthew chapter 8, Peter sees that. Matthew, they're seeing this, and they declare Jesus 
bore all of your sickness, carried all of your disease on his own body, and he said, it's with his stripes you are healed. Yeah. Isaiah said, I am. Peter said, you are. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, Matthew says, you are. Peter says, Jesus bore all of your sickness, carried all of your diseases on his own body in a tree. You're now dead unto sin. You can now live unto righteousness, and it's by his stripes you were. If I were, I am. Are you hearing me? Isaiah looking ahead at the cross. Matthew's there at the cross. Peter looks back at the cross. You can look back at the cross and see your healing, your deliverance, your prosperity, your victory, your everything that God has for you. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Jesus has already done everything he's ever going to do, made the deposit on the inside of you, and my faith, the release of my faith is in response to what he's already done. So when I release faith, not for what he's going to do, what he's already done. Somebody said, I'm already healed. You have, I have to stop and let you think about this for a minute. Somebody said, I'm already healed. I'm already Somebody said, I'm already, I'm already blessed. Say, I am blessed. I am blessed. Ephesians 1, 3 said, he hath blessed you with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Where is Christ? He's in me. He's already blessed me with all, all spiritual blessings. Where are they? They're in my spirit. They're in the realm of the spirit. He's blessed me with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. They're already inside of me. The deposit has already been made. And so my faith responds to what God has already done. And as a result of that, here's manifestation of what God has already done. I'm already blessed. And it don't matter what it looks like. <laughs> Glory to God. Isn't that what Abraham did? He said, I'm a father of many, what's your name, father of many nations? You ain't got no children, I'm a father of many nations. You ain't got no kids, I'm a father of many nations. <laughs> Look. Romans, let's, yeah, let's look at that. Romans chapter 4. I want you to see this. Romans chapter 4. Now, I got to start at verse 16 because, remember, God has put the deposit of his spirit in your spirit so you would know the things that have been freely given unto us. Somebody said they were free. So he says in verse 16, Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace. To the end, the promise may be sure to all the seed. It is of faith that it might be by grace. You release faith for the grace that God has placed in your life. What is grace? Everything free God gave you. We call it his unmerited favor. In other words, we didn't deserve it. We couldn't earn it. He gave it to us free. That's grace. Hallelujah. It is God's endowment of power coming up on your life, causing you to be something you couldn't be without him 
causing you to do something you couldn't do without him, causing you to manifest something you can't do without him. It is a faith so you can see, get the free results. <laughs> I just released my faith in response to his grace. What grace? All those free gifts. And at the end, the promise is sure. Glory to God. What promise? He said that God said that it was of faith and of Abraham, who was a father of all. He had nothing to do with the law. As it is written, I've made you a father of many nations. How I many that was a grace on Abraham's life? It was a free gift before whom he believed even God who quickened the dead and called those things that be not as though they were. And he could call those things that be not as though they were because they was. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? I can call him a father of many nations be, be, because before he was, before Abraham, whatever was, I made him a father. Do I have to go over that again? Before ever Abraham ever came into existence naturally, before he ever got in his mother's womb, I made him a father. So I call those things that be not as though they were, hallelujah, the way they were, what I said. He spake and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Listen, we're going somewhere with this now. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become a father of many nations according as it was spoken? So shall your seed be. God spoke it, so shall your seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about 100 years old, yet not the deadness of Sarah's womb. But he staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief, but he was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Fully persuaded that what God had promised, he's able also to perform. Abraham believed God, and the Bible said it was accounted to him for righteousness. He received what he had a right to based on what he believed. And his faith was in response to what he believed. He was fully persuaded. What did he do? Give God glory. Ain't had no baby. Mama ain't pregnant. But I give God glory for what he's done. <laughs> I'm a father. You don't have a baby, I'm a father. <laughs> oh, glory to God. And it wasn't, it had nothing to do with Abraham's natural ability to conceive or cause conception to take place in his wife. Because his body is, nothing's working now. She's barren. How many know it's God's grace on Abraham's life, grace to be a father. And Abraham responded in faith to the grace that was on his life. You respond in faith to the grace that's on your life. Those free gifts that God has placed on the inside of him. And I told you before, once you receive and you operate in this God kind of faith, operating in your life is not um it's it's the life that you live naturally supernaturally because it keeps working for you that's just the state of being of who you are walking by faith and not by sight knowing that god when i respond in faith to what he's already done that that faith is always producing for me because it's always working now. Are you getting this? Yeah. Abraham, look at, look, at, look at Genesis. Glory to God. Now, Genesis chapter 25. Abraham has his baby. Glory to God. Uh, Sarah, his wife, has gone home to be with the Lord. 
Abraham, remember, he's over a hundred and something years old when he had Isaac. And so, okay, that faith is still working inside of Abraham. Abraham gets another wife. He knows, I ain't too old to have babies. <laughs> then again, Abraham took a wife. Her name was Keturah. And she bare him Zimram and Zoshan and Medan and Midian and Ishbak and Shua. Oh, my God, wait a minute. How many more babies did he have? One, two, three, four, five, six small children? Why? I'm a father. <laughs> he tried for the longest time to have a baby naturally. And when it didn't no longer work for him naturally, it's not going to work for you naturally because God gives you everything spiritually and you compare spiritual things with spiritual things. It has nothing to do with natural things. It had nothing to do with Abraham's ability to have a baby. And even when he had one naturally, God says, that's not the promised seed. That's not what I promised you. It's going to come out of your own bowels from your own wife. Until so he got to a place where he couldn't do it naturally, it's got to be the grace. So it is a faith that it might be by grace. And God had a grace on Abraham's life to have children. And when he tapped into the grace, he had six more. <laughs> Are you hearing me? Anybody's ever been healed by God? Tap into the grace and stay healed. Anybody ever been delivered? Tap into the grace and stay delivered. Hallelujah. Go back to Romans. Now, he said, verse 16, therefore it is a faith that it might be by grace to the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed. We stopped at verse 22. And therefore it was imputed unto him for righteousness. Now it is written for his sake, not written for his sake only, that it was imputed to him, but for us also, to whom it shall be imputed. If we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead who was delivered for our offenses, the very thing that would try to stop you from manifesting the will of God, who was raised again for our justification. Somebody said, I've been justified. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace, where we stand, wherein we stand, wherein we stand. I know what Jesus already done. I'm standing. He's already done it. I'm standing. I'm not moving from this position. It's finished. It's already done. It's already been deposited on the inside of me. I've got the victory. I'm standing. I've got the victory. I'm healed. I got the victory. I'm delivered. I got the victory. I'm standing. I have access by faith into this grace. Therefore, I'm standing. Not only am I standing, I rejoice because it's done. Hallelujah. Rejoice in hope of the manifestation of God. I know it's done. Somebody say it's done. It's done. Glory to God. And so it is a faith that it might be by grace. It's through faith that I have access into this grace that God has placed in my life. Now, Romans 12, look at it. It says, verse 3, For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as 
God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. You have what it takes to manifest what God deposits on the inside of you. Somebody said, I have what it takes to manifest what God has deposited in my spirit. I have been given the measure of faith. Now, God understands the grace that he's put on your life, and he's given you faith. He's given you faith in proportion to the grace that he's placed on your life. Let's see that. For we are, we, as we have many members in one body, all, all members have not the same office. So we being many are one body in Christ and everyone members of one another. Having then gifts differing according, having gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us prophesy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. The gifts that God has placed on the inside of you or the grace of God that he's put on the inside of you, he's given you a proportion of faith for the grace he's put in your life. And so it is a faith that it might be by grace. It's a free gift. Those gifts that God, a gift is just that. Have you ever paid for a gift? Have you ever paid? If it's a gift, do you pay for it? It's a gift. And he said, God has deposited some gifts on the inside of you, which is his grace, free gifts, they're yours, and he's given you faith for the grace of God on your life. And he that is spiritual judge all things or discern all things. And he realized you think soberly because you know it's not anything that you have done to earn or deserve what God has given to you And that God has given you the measure of faith because of the grace that he's put on your life. Hold your, well, look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Let me give you an example of this. So he says to you, think soberly. Don't be high-minded. Don't think of yourself more highly than you ought to. God has given you the measure of faith for the grace of God on your life. And so it's nothing that I have done to earn or deserve his grace, his favor, his free gifts that he has given me. And because he's given me all these free gifts, because he's given me the victory, he's given me faith to release the grace on my life. So you think soberly. That's what happened with Paul. 1 Corinthians 15, are you there? Verse 9, he says, For I am the least of the apostles, that I am not meet to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. I am the least of all the apostles. I don't deserve anything that God has put in my life. I, I, I try to do everything right, but I, it just, I don't deserve it. I'm the least of all the apostles. He said, I'm the least because... I persecuted the church. Just, you know, the enemy would tell you, you don't deserve to be healed. Look at you, you smoked all your life. Your lungs are toe up. You're going to die of cancer. You don't deserve to be healed. Look at your marriage, it's all toe up. If you wouldn't have commit adultery, your wife would love you now. Your husband would love you. If you wasn't so mean and nasty, you'd be together right now. If you didn't do this, if you didn't do that. If you just did this, if you hadn't done that, you would be more prosperous today. You would do this, you would do that. He's I'm the least of all the apostles. I don't even deserve to be an apostle, but I am. What I am, oh, glory to God, by the grace of God. Jesus. Are you hearing me? Nobody deserves it. Nobody can earn it. It's a free gift. Yes, your marriage should be towed up. Yes, you should be dying. Yes, you should not be alive. But by his grace. And tell me, what did you do to make God look down on you and say, you know what? They don't deserve to die of cancer. They don't deserve, look at all the good things that they're doing. They're such a great person. Look at all that stuff. No, he saw the blood of Jesus. And the 
is by his grace. He said, I am what I am by the grace of God, which was bestowed upon me, and it was not in vain. It wasn't in vain. Those gifts inside of you, God doesn't want them to have no good use. To be in vain means no use. He's put healing on the inside of you. Oh, glory to God. Oh, my God. He's put prosperity on the inside of you. How dare you be poor? How dare you be sick? He's put it on the inside of you. It's by the grace of God. You are who you are by God's grace. He called you blessed. He called you prosperous. It's not in vain. Oh, glory to God. Jesus didn't die in vain. He purchased my healing. I'm walking in healing. He purchased my deliverance. I'm walking in deliverance. He purchased my prosperity. I'm walking in prosperity. God, I thank you for being my healer. Thank you for being my deliverer. Thank you for being my savior. Thank you for being my provider. Thank you for being my God. Thank you, God. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. It's by his grace. It is a faith that it might be by grace. And it's by his grace. Paul said, I am what I am by the grace of God. And his grace which he bestowed upon me was not in vain. Look what else he's saying. He said, but I labor more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. He said, I labor more than everybody, but it's not me that's laboring. It's a grace on my life. How do you do what you do? It's God's grace. I know it's nothing that I've done. Don't think of yourself more highly than you ought to. God's made a deposit of gifts on the inside of you. And then he gave you faith in proportion to the grace that's on your life. And though I labor, it's not me that's laboring. It's God. It's his grace. That's on me. And what he's placed on me is not in vain. It's not to no good use. That's what he said. Look in 2 Corinthians chapter 6. He says we are, well, you got to almost back up. It says, listen, chapter 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Somebody say I'm a new creature. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things are new. Somebody say, all things are new. All things are new. Somebody say, all things are new. All things are new. I'll say it again. Say, all things are new. All things are new. You, you got to get this. All, the old man has passed away. The natural man, that old way of thinking, feeling, touching, looking at things, have passed away. Everything's new. And all things are of God, who have reconciled us unto himself, given me the ministry of reconciliation. He did it in Christ Jesus. He's in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. He's not holding your sin against you. He's not holding anything against you. It is the devil that says, you don't deserve nothing. You no good, dirty thing. You, you are not saved. You're not this. You're not that. God's not holding anything against you. And has committed unto you and I a word of reconciliation. So that makes me an ambassador for Christ. And as his ambassador, he goes on to say, and we beseech you by God. We pray you in Christ's stead, be reconciled unto God. We have a ministry of reconciling others into the kingdom of God. Now, God made Jesus to be sin with your sin and my sin. So that you who knew no righteousness could be made right with his righteousness. Somebody said, I was made right. Say, in the word is always right. Oh, glory to God. Somebody say, I was made 
the righteousness of God. The Bible says, Romans, if you and I were made the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. He made you right. We then, chapter 6, as workers together with him, beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. <laughs> Do not receive what you have a right to, to no good use. You have a blood-bought right to be healed. You have a blood-bought right to be delivered, to be free, victorious, to receive what God has for you. For he has said, and I have heard thee in a time accepted, in the day of salvation I have secured thee or helped you. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day, oh my God, of salvation. There is a time when I said I'll help you, I'll hear you. Now is that time. God's going to hear me. God's going to help me. God's going to deliver me. God's going to do it. God's going to. There's a time that I said I would accept and hear and help you. Now is. Now faith is. Somebody said, I'm delivered now. Somebody said, it's already done. Have you noticed that how God speaks? My time is up. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. He already, when he tells you something, that belongs to you, he doesn't speak futuristic. He always talks in past tense. Go in and possess the land I already gave it to you. <laughs> Go in and enter into the kingdom that was prepared for you before the foundation. Are you hearing what God is saying? He's letting you know that what he's done, he's already done it for you. It was done before you ever got here. I prepared these things before the foundation of the world. It's already done. It already belongs to you. And it is a faith that it might be by grace. For by grace were you saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. It's not working. Even your giving it's not the working of my giving. It is a working of my response to what he's already done. God's already blessed me. My response to the blessings of God on my life is my giving. I'm not giving to get God to do anything. He's already done it. Glory to God. I'm going to sow my seed and wait for the manifestation. No, I'm sowing seed because he's already done it. Are you hearing me? Your faith is always in response to what he's already done. Somebody shout, it's finished. Stand to your feet. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Listen, your prosperity is done. Your getting out of debt is done. I see about three people receive that. I think it's glory to God. Why do you think we say, I'm out of debt? All my needs are met. Do you think that is futuristic or do you believe it's now? I'm out of debt. All my needs are met. What is 
my response to that? My faith in my giving. Because he's already done it. And my faith is my giving, is my response to what God has already done to cause the manifestation of what he's already placed in my spirit to be a reality in this natural world that I live in. Those are spiritual laws, not natural laws. Natural law, you, need a, you have a need, go to the bank, borrow, beg, steal, lie, cheat, do whatever you can to get it. In the kingdom, there are needs that come up in my life. I sow a seed based on my response. This is my response to what he's already done. The natural man can't receive that. It's foolishness. Neither can he know them. But it's the spirit of God inside of me comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. God has already made a deposit of my prosperity on the inside of me. I am so rich. I am full of the blessings of God. I am so blessed. I'm blessed to be a blessing. God, I thank you for the blessings of God that you have placed on the inside of me. I thank you that every one of my needs are met according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. The job is not my source. God, you are my source. I'm not looking to man. I'm looking to heaven. It's already done. God, I just thank you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, it's finished. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Is he crazy? God, he's leaving me. My kids are out there on the street, Lord God. Can you do it, Jesus? Please. I know I don't deserve it, Lord God. But please, God, you do it. Lord God. Come boldly to the throne of grace and obtain. Oh, glory to God. Come get your mercy. It's new every morning. It's available to you. And when you come to the mercy seat of Almighty God, you will always find all the help you need. Do you obtain the mercy of God and find, find grace to help? Somebody said, there is grace for all the help I need. I think you need to say that one more time. There is grace. There is a power. There is an anointing for all the help that I need. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And it is your faith that gives you access to the grace of God for your help. How do I? It's your faith. You respond to what God's already done. Do you know your children are already delivered? He said, I'll save you and your household. That's why I said the word of God has to become revelation to you. You've got to understand. God says, I've already delivered them. I'll save you and your household. They're in my household. They're delivered. Well, Pastor Cynthia, they're out there. They're doing stuff. They ain't got no business. You mean to tell me that they're delivered? God says, I will deliver those that are not even innocent because of the pureness of your hands. They already saved. Somebody said, I believe. I receive. I receive. When do you receive? Now. Mark eleven twenty four. I believe. I receive when I pray. You believe you receive when you pray. You're gonna what? No. What does the scripture say? Somebody said I got it. Somebody said I got it. Somebody said I got it. Say it's already done. I got, I got my healing. I got my deliverance. I got my prosperity. 
I got my baby. I got my husband. I got my wife. I got my house. I got that new car. I got it. I got it. Glory. Now go get the tape, because you need to hear it again. You need to hear it again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody said, is 